Uh, I'm just going to start with a few words about myself, not that you should care in any way, except that I will be stating opinions. And when you hear opinions, it's good to see where they are coming from. So I've been a free software enthusiast for quite some time now, and also engaged early in my career into research and teaching in algebraic combinatorics, so just border between math and computer science. And pretty soon I tried to join my two patients and started to develop the free software a free software for what I was doing for my research. Um, and, pro and here, the, the kind of software we're speaking about are software like SageMap, Gap, on, on Overs, which can be millions of lines developed by hundreds of people. So it's kind of large software uh, open and open source. And if, later on in my career, so five years ago, uh, I started to try to see how we could support the software communities with funding. And so uh, I've been coordinating an EU project um, supporting Sage, Gap, and many other software. All right. So I'm going to start with a very small anecdote. Um, back in 1999, uh, as a free software enthusiast, I participated to the organization of a free software conference in Lyon. And since my father was developing software for science, I invited him to give a talk. And his title was 40 years of scientific free software. And the lesson I learned this is that quite often um, you get enthusiastic about ideas that seems to be just emerging. But in fact, those ideas have been in action for years, if not decades, way before they've been conceptualized and recognized widely. Uh, so what I'm going to try to do in this talk is, uh, so this suggested me to do, to try to do a bit the same thing about the FAIR principles and, see, and try to say a few words uh, about how we have these ideas have been in action for a long time in the math software community. Uh, it's actually, it actually would be a long story. And I, when typing in my abstract, it became uh, uh, two, three pages text, which only shows a very small piece of the world, uh, the whole story. And really, the, my talk now is going to be the abstract for the story rather than the, than the converse. So this is the full story if you want to see it. Um, so I just, again, base myself on an anecdote. So that about the same time, I had a very good friend and we were both uh, doing a, um, a PhD thesis in algebraic combinatorics. Uh, so Florent, here on the left, um, was doing research in representation theory. Uh, and myself, I was doing invariant theory. And we are, of course, talking about the map all the time. And both of us, loved computers and so both of us were using quite a lot of computer exploration and writing code and so we discussed the specific algorithm that he was using the specific algorithm that he was using and so on but nothing much beyond discussion happened and then at some point after we did this we started to actually we decided to actually look at the code and then we discovered something very interesting uh, in his, between his code and my code, 90% was exactly the same. He had both very specific things about representation theory. I had my specific algorithm about invariant theory, but 90% of the code was doing the same kind of things, uh, enabling to compute the same kind of, of algebra. So what had happened here? Uh, what lesson did, I, did we learn then? Well, I could not find my best friend's code. And um, even if I had found it, I could not access it because, well, first it was not published. And also he was using Maple, I was using UPad, and I didn't have a Maple license. And anyway, even if I had, uh, I wanted to, what I would have liked to do is mix his code with mine, but Maple and UPad were not interoperable. And so at the end of the day, even if we were close friends discussing a lot and so on, we could not reuse each other's code. Now think what would have happened if we had uh, actually shared the code. Uh, we could have actually saved 50% of the software development time because most of the things we would have done together and then each of us would have done just a little magic or on specific field. And 50% more time means more research and of course more juggling. Uh, so based on this, we, we decided to try to do better. And we, we started uh, a project, Star Combinat, which is about sharing algebraic combinatorics. And of course, what you gain when you have two people gets even better. So uh, uh, if you are more than this, so we try to apply induction and go from two people to a community of about 30 people quite, quite soon. 
Um, I won't say it yet. Don't get me started speaking more about this because this, this would last for quite a long time. Um, I would just say that, uh, so sorry was quite long. We first were using MUPAD and then at some point uh, there was this general purpose uh, system for mathematics called SageMath that appeared and we, we were happy to join the ecosystem. And I know I'm going to just point at some of the best practices um, that are put in this ecosystem and that made this ecosystem viable. So I'm, I'm, there's a big list. I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to, to point some of the very important ones. So to promote findability, one of the very efficient means is to organize a lot of training. You want people to be aware of the software. You want people to, uh, to learn about it. And in particular, it's quite important to have dedicated software for women and minorities. Of course, we want tools and so on. Another thing that we might not think uh, immediately, that findability is not only about finding the software itself, but at making your way inside a huge software. When you have millions of lines, how do you find that specific feature that you're interested in? And something that is quite powerful is to try to have your, your system uh, to try to model as closely as possible your business logic and objects. You want your users not to be speaking about their specific algorithm, but they want to be speaking in their natural math language. So of course, for us, math. So you want them to be speaking in their math language and interact with the system in a way that is as close as possible from what they are aware doing. And this will guide them through, oh, I want to compute this. What is this called? Oh, here is a name. Documentation, obviously, is very important. Uh, one nice project I would like to suggest is something that is very important in documentation is to have a strong network of cross links so that when you explore something and say, oh, what can I do there? It points you to other things that you might not have discovered otherwise. The thing is building this network of cross links is, takes a lot of work. And one thing I've been puzzling is whether natural process language processing could not help, uh, could not come to the rescue by analyzing the huge body of little pieces of documentation that we have and finding connections for us and doing the cross-linking and suggesting, oh, maybe you would be interested in that particular thing. So that's a few things about findability. About accessibility, uh, essentially it's all about making it easy to install your software on personal computers and computing infrastructure. And this is a lot of work. Uh, because of, you have to take care of portability, of packaging effort, and, and so on. I would point, I would strongly suggest when well, making sure your software is packaged and, and, and don't have your things. Um, but it's not about, only about making the core software available, but it's also about making it easy for your users to make their extensions and their computational narratives we have heard about Jupyter Hub before, uh, Jupyter before. So to make them accessible, uh, easily accessible to support basic reprodu reproducibility, at least make it easy for someone to access software, the narrative and play with it. And also to support long-term archival, for example, through software heritage. Um, about interoperability, I won't go, it starts to be quite technical, so I won't go deeply into there. But one of the main thing that required a lot of work in our area is that all systems are based on hundreds of components and you need to, to, uh, to bridge those components together and to fight all the silo effects that you tend to have between components. Finally, about reuse reusability. And this is going also to touch on sustainability. Um, these are large pieces of software that take a lot of work to develop and if it's absolutely critical to save as much energy as you can and to save it by reusing existing things. So reusing existing programming language, libraries, computing environments like Jupyter, development models and tools. Um, and yeah, and of course, so you, you want to make your software reusable and again, accessibility and generic code are quite uh, important. One aspect is when you de design a system, you often think about the technical sides, but actually the social aspects are as important as technical aspect. Um, about sustainability, um, I would just point one part, is we want to promote ecosystems. So nowadays we're not speaking about individual software, but really ecosystem of software. Uh, 
And one thing that we want to promote is ecosystem of software where features, so at a small granularity, features live, compete, and die. Why should things die when they're not used anymore? Because of technical depth, and technical depth can really kill your project. Um, it's not so bad if these things that die are actually archived. So competition at a very small granularity. Yet at the same time, at high granularity, so when we are speaking about people and system, there we want to advocate for collaboration uh, so that we destroy. I will conclude with just a few messages for policymakers. Um, one of them is that software is not the same thing as data, but specific challenges, so we cannot just apply the same principles. Um, luckily, the fair ideas have been in the community for decades, so there is a lot of a lot to learn by just looking at what different group of people have been have been doing. Um, in general, I have seen around me that most of the time, if you give them means, scientists are really like open the idea of open science and they would be enthusiastic. So it's really about uh, encouraging them. So to all policymakers, please support and foster fair practices, but don't impose them because there are so many different ways to apply them and the right way to apply them depends so much from one way to the other that deciding on general rules that would apply for everyone just wouldn't work. This would be counterproductive. So support, don't impose. Um, we, this kind of large software I've been mentioning uh, can be developed by users for users most of the time, but it's absolutely critical to have access to research or software engineers for training, for advice, and for tackling high level, uh, highly technical tasks. So please make it easy to have flexible access at all time scales to research software engineers. And well, we want to, for this, we need to have good software and research software engineers around. So we, it's absolutely necessary to promote career paths, long-term career paths for all research software engineers. Uh, all of this takes That's, funding. It just, uh, it just, Keeping an eye on the time, could you wrap yes. up? Yeah. I'm basically done. Yeah, okay. thank you. Um, so we need funding. And in particular, it's not just about funding this very fashionable new thing, but it's really about funding software, long-term software maintenance. That, that's the most important part. And I should say that when people think about funding, most of the time we think about project-based funding. Um, I've done my homework. I've been running such a project. It can work, it can bring things, but it has its limit because of predictability, because of tension between project funding, project-based funding and career paths, and because of the huge overhead that project-based funding impose uh, on community in general and on coordinators in particular. Uh, so please promote not only project-based funding, but also recurrent funding. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>